from the company who has the rights to Godzilla, King Kong, and Pacific Rim. So please, please, please do a crossover where they all fight each other and stuff. Comes the best American Godzilla movie ever made, which really isn't saying much. That's a lot of fish. Godzilla. Prepare for a movie that was sold as a face-off between Walter White and Godzilla, yet barely oh contains any Brian Cranston, <laughs> and even less Godzilla. Yeah. Seriously, there's less than 20 minutes of it. We count it. <laughs> Get ready for the tease of the summer, bringing you the king of the monsters like you've never seen him before. Obscured by water, hidden in smoke, <laughs> Barely visible through masks, <laughs> shot from really long distances on television, and shrouded in near constant darkness. Oh, wait, here we go. <laughs> nope. Aww. In a movie called Godzilla, spend 80% of the runtime with two monsters that no one has ever heard of <laughs> this gigantic spider monkey thing and this moth who is totally not Mothra. <laughs> then watch as they it's fight funny. against all odds to find a safe place to pork. <laughs> Take that, true love. <laughs> Instead of watching the title character kick ass, spend hours of screen time with kick ass and the rest of his boring family. There's his dad, whose wig is almost as bad as his Japanese. <laughs> kick ass's wife, an emergency room nurse who reacts to a crisis by abandoning her patients and pawning off her only child on a co worker. And this guy. <laughs> He's a professional bomb disposal expert who never defuses any bombs. <laughs> a magnet for every single giant monster. An a-hole who keeps volunteering for dangerous missions instead of coming home to his wife and kid. If you don't walk out, you don't come back at all. Sir, I'll do whatever it takes. And a hero who spends more time than ever saving this random boy he met on a train than he does trying to save his own family. I'm gonna beat the house with my son. Now I'm gonna get you and Sam out. Tell them to run, you idiot. <laughs> In a nod to the series' <laughs> Japanese roots, ride along with Ken Watanabe, who's only in the movie to dramatically say one name. We call him... Ojira. Deliver <laughs> one cool line. Let them fight. And of course, <laughs> stare. <laughs> <laughs> like the unbreakable uh, <laughs> honest trailer. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Story <laughs> the Olsen triplet. Discount Channing Tatum. <laughs> Reisenberg, uh, and real kaiju have curves. <laughs> Godzilla, okay. the good one. <laughs> Man, if that's what his breath is like, I'd hate to see his farts. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. I was thinking we could do a Godzilla movie. Oh, that's a recognizable name, and we haven't made one in a while. That checks all the boxes. It sure does, sir. And I was thinking we could get Brian Cranston to be in it. Oh, he's coming hot off of Breaking Bad. He's very in demand right now. Very hot. Yeah, he is. He's so hot. That's... Yeah, I mean, sure, good-looking guy. So what happens in the movie? Well, we're gonna sure. follow Brian Cranston's guy, Joe Brody, right? And he and his wife work at this Japanese power plant. Right, okay. And there's, like, some weird seismic activity going on, so he sends his wife to go check it out, and she ends up dying. Oh, that's fatal. It is, and the whole plant gets destroyed. It's a huge disaster. Oh, that's no. Fatal. Yeah, and so then years later, Joe's son is this military bomb diffuser guy, right? What's his son's name? Ford. Oh, selling your child's name as advertising space is tight. <laughs> 
I don't. That's, that's not a thing. Sure it is. Just ask my sons, Ben and Jerry, and Outback Steakhouse. Oh, it's not okay that you did that. Well, anyway, Ford comes home after well. 14 months, and he gets to see his wife and his kid. Uh, right. But then he gets a call that his father's been arrested in Japan. What for? Well, he broke into this restricted zone where his house used to be to recover some disks and files of research. Oh. Yeah, he's obsessed with what happened. He thinks the government's hiding something. Okay, okay. So then Ford goes to bail him out, and they end up breaking into the restricted zone again. Couldn't that have some pretty serious implications? Yeah. A U.S. military guy breaking into another government's restricted zone? I imagine it could, yeah, putting his entire career and family <laughs> at risk, but the movie has to happen, so he's not gonna think about that stuff. Fair <laughs> enough. So they get arrested again, and they get brought to this facility, and then a big monster pops out. Oh, Godzilla? Nope. Oh. And then there's this big collapse, and Joe gets nope. hurt real bad. <laughs> oh no, does he survive? He does. Okay, thank God. Yeah, so then they're in a helicopter, and Joe is in a stretcher, and that's the point he survives up until. What? Well, he casually <laughs> dies, so he's not gonna be in the movie anymore. He's our main guy. That's casually Brian dies. Cranston. It was, but we gotta get him out of the movie now. <laughs> he's gonna be our big name in all the marketing. Well, this way we can focus on his much less interesting and charismatic son, who has less of a personal attachment to the research and story and monster. <laughs> okay, so Brian's just barely in the movie. That's right, and you know who else is barely gonna be in the movie? Uh, oh, please don't say Godzilla. Godzilla? <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're gonna follow a bunch of human characters, and also just straight up some other monsters called Mutos. So should we maybe title the movie Muto then? No, we should call it Godzilla, because that's how we're gonna get people to come look at our Mutos. <laughs> oh, I don't like how that sounded. It did somehow sound inappropriate, yeah. So then what happens? Well, these researchers, Vivian and Dr. Sarazawa, they decide their only hope is to talk to oh, Ford. Why? Man. Well, because they need to know what his father knew. So why don't they go through his research and stuff? Unclear. So then they yeah. all realize that these monsters are communicating with echolocation. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and then we're gonna see Godzilla. Oh boy, here we go. Kind of. Oh. <laughs> he's gonna be swimming and he's gonna dive under a ship and pop out on the other side. Why does he dive under the ship? Doesn't Godzilla just kind of destroy everything in his yeah. path? Well, this ship has an important character on it, so he's gonna avoid it. <laughs> oh, a very considerate lizard. So then this monster shows up in Hawaii and Godzilla shows up too to fight it. Oh boy, we're gonna see them fight? Yeah, but no, actually, we're gonna cut away. Okay. And so Godzilla starts chasing this thing off screen, of course, and they both cause a bunch of destruction. So why is Godzilla chasing it? Well, Dr. Sarazawa says that Godzilla is probably like a power to restore balance in the natural world. Oh, that is quite the leap. How'd he come to the conclusion that this giant lizard is in charge of balancing nature? Oh, well, because I, I write the lines, he says. Oh, okay, you told him to say it. I did, yeah. So we're going to find out that this monster's on his way to mate with a female, and they need a bunch of radiation to do uh, that. Oh, kinky. So since these monsters feed on radiation, the military's plan is to lure them out to sea with this big nuke and then oh, blow them man. all up. Okay. But these monsters have EMP abilities, so they gotta use like an old mechanical bomb. They gotta transport it by train instead of by air. Won't the radiation from the bomb attract the monsters to the train? It can and it does. Right? <laughs> that seems like an obvious thing that would happen. Yeah, and so one of the monsters <laughs> destroys the train and steals a warhead. Uh-oh, so what does the military do with the mechanical bomb? Well, the train's all busted now, so they gotta travel by air. I thought they couldn't <laughs> do that. Yeah, but now they can. Oh, okay. <laughs> so they set the timer on this nuke for an hour and a half later. Oh, they got it to where it needs to be? That's good. No, they started ahead of time. What? Yeah, they start a timer on a nuclear bomb without any guarantee they can bring it to its destination <laughs> on time. Yeah, that's... Why? So the movie can have higher stakes than a timer. That works. Hey, what's <laughs> Ford doing through all this? Oh, well, he's present. He's around for all, every, he sees it all. Oh. Yeah, anytime the military has a new part to their plan, he's like, hey guys, can I come along? <laughs> Shouldn't he get home to his family? Exactly. Yeah, but instead he's gonna be like, hey guys, can I come along? <laughs> what's the deal with his wife anyway? What's going on with her? What do you mean? But what about her character? <laughs> Tell me about her personality. Wife, what, nurse? <laughs> all right, but mother, these aren't personality traits. Wife, nurse, mother. All right. Yeah, and at a certain point, she's gonna put her son on a bus that's headed to the Golden Gate Bridge. Oh, has she not seen every disaster movie ever? <laughs> then the Golden Gate Bridge is gonna get destroyed. I bet it is. Oh but the kid God. doesn't die, so giving her kid up to a co-worker and then just kind of running around the city aimlessly <laughs> ended up being good parenting. Oh, well, great. So anyway, then the monsters are gonna try to settle down and start a family, but Godzilla and the humans are gonna be like, nope, and they kill their babies. A little messed up when you phrase it that way. <laughs> so Godzilla's gonna start fighting these monsters, and sometimes we're gonna be able to see some of them. 
<laughs> through the darkness okay. and smoke and stuff. Wow, 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 wow. And then Ford is going to do a cool halo jump with some soldiers instead of trying to find his family. <laughs> Very exciting. And Godzilla is going to be fighting both these monsters and knocking down buildings. You know, monster stuff. Yikes, yeah, it's going to be tough for him to figure out how to beat them, I guess. Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, eventually he starts using his atomic breath power, and so that really helps. He kills both of them. Why didn't he do that in the first place? <laughs> Unclear. Well, okay then. So then Ford is going to find himself at the edge of the city with the nuclear bomb with just five minutes left on the timer. Oh, so he's going to use the one skill we've established he has and disarm the bomb? Ah, that would have been good, but no, no. Oh. Yeah, no, he's got the bomb on this little whale watching boat, and he's got to get it 20 miles away from the city. In five minutes? So that thing's got to go like... 240 miles per hour? If that's what the math is on that, sure. So then it does that, and Ford gets picked up by a helicopter, which oh somehow saw him in the midst of all the chaos. Oh, well, great. Yeah, and then Godzilla walks into the ocean, and people on TV are like, is Godzilla our savior? Didn't Godzilla cause just as much death and destruction as the other monsters? He did, but he also killed them, so. So he's just like the killer monster that didn't die. Yeah, so he's a savior now. <laughs> well, okay then. And so that's about it. Yeah. What do you think? Well, it sounds like a pretty good Godzilla movie, who do you think we should get to play Ford and wife Nurse Mother? Oh, definitely two actors that would also make convincing siblings. <laughs> what? I was waiting for that. I was waiting for him to say something about Elizabeth Olsen and Aaron Taylor Johnson being brother and sister in Age of Ultron. So I had a feeling it was going to come. Didn't think it would be at the end, but I had a feeling. Which was weird for me because, you know, they, I knew about that casting and I was like, well, they, they, they were just husband and wife and now they're brother and sister. This is weird. It's acting. I get it. It's acting, but it's also just kind of weird. As far as this Godzilla movie from 2014, like it, it's, it's okay. The sequel is better and I don't really like the sequel all that much. I'm looking forward to Godzilla versus Kong big time. Yeah. It's just kind of like, eh, Brian Cranston was in there. I was looking forward to that. His wig is terrible. looks awful, but he's barely in the movie at that point. And then Godzilla is barely in the movie. And it's just chock full of all the things that you hate about these types of movies. I don't care about the human stuff as much as I care about the monsters fighting or in Transformers case, the robots fighting. Like I, all this human stuff can just, you know, just let go of all that. So this movie is very low on my list in comparison to a lot of, you know, kaiju or monster movies, whatever. Pacific Rim I think is great. Pacific Rim does a really good job. I think it does a good job because it has to include the human characters because they're part of the robots fighting the, the kaiju monsters. So you gotta incorporate them in that way. Where in these scenarios, these monsters are completely separate from the humans. Looks like not so much in Godzilla vs. Kong, considering Kong kinda gets close to a little girl. It's, it's all kinda weird, but that's just me. What'd you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Did you like Godzilla 2014? Uh, are you looking forward to Godzilla vs. Kong? Do you like the human stuff? I like how Honest Trailer had the staring section in here, just like in Unbreakable. So that was pretty funny. So they kind of brought that back and both were really good. Uh, but let me know which one you think was best in the comments as always. And uh, let's talk about it. Let's chat. If you want to continue to keep laughing and smiling, check out some of our most popular videos on the channel. You can also check out our most recent reaction right over here. If you've already seen all that, then I'll see you guys in the comments for this one.